By ending the steaming Atlanta Hawks seven game winning streak and beating the Miami Heat twice in one week, the Toronto Raptors proved they're a dangerous lower seed in the Eastern Conference. Elite shot manufacturer Gary Trent Jr. has dropped 30 points in five consecutive games, Fred Van Vliet is one of three players in NBA history, next to Stephen Curry and James Harden, to have made three three-pointers in 17 consecutive games. Steady Freddie and Pascal Siakam are one of three duos in NBA history, including MJ and Pippen, to have combined for 325-plus points and 100-plus assists in a single month. The 19-point-per-game lockdown OG Ananobi is delivering in the clutch not just by hitting shots, but by saving his most elusive defensive actions for when the Six has needed them most in the fourth quarter. This video gives you the details on all that and more. Plus, can the NBA champions from 2019 be a dark horse contender with a couple deals at the upcoming 2022 trade deadline? I know fans north of the border have been longing for that trade deadline, so stay tuned until the end to find out the trades Masai Ujiri could possibly pursue and deals I personally think he should pursue. Right quick, only 12.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. On Dflow Toronto, my Raptors channel, which I'll be posting a ton of uploads on in the near future, I predicted the Raps would make the playoffs back on Halloween. Since then, on this channel, Dflow Hoops, we've talked about the Raps in about 6-8 to eight uploads. Early on in the year, I was in attendance for 5 games against the Pacers, Nets, Pistons, Knicks, and Kings. I was lucky to have gone and chanted defense when I did because 2 days after the game against Sacramento, my great friend Dougie Ford shut it all down. Since December 18th against Golden State, despite having to mix up their games playing in front of an eerily quiet Scotiabank Arena and then going on the road to fight off a hostile crowd, the feisty young Raps are still three games over 500. Toronto currently has the eighth best record in the Eastern Conference. They've won four of five games and were 10 and six in January. Also, with a hefty 33 games of their season remaining, the 2019 champs are just five and a half games within striking distance of the currently number one seeded Chicago Bulls. Making the team president Masai Ujiri and the global ambassador Drake a few happy guys, the one Canadian NBA franchise has been taking down some tough competition as of late. More on that in a minute. After two stellar showdowns in Miami, in which the Raps and Heat split one win apiece, this time with both squads on a back-to-back -back in the third game, Monday night was bound to be another thriller. Let me correct that, it was expectedly thrilling other than the fact that it took place in the bizarro world that is now just the mostly empty Scotiabank Arena. It may not have been a triple OT game of the year, but for a third time, the Raps and Heat went down to the wire and featured big performances on both sides. For Toronto, no showing was more timely and massive than the former Portland Trailblazer Gary Trent Jr., the Raps' shifty and fundamentally sound shot-creating two-guard, posted his franchise record-tying fifth straight game with 30 or more points, his fifth straight game with five or more three-pointers made as well. The recently turned 23-year-old is already in his fifth season, experience which seems to be tremendously paying off. Most scarily for Portland fans, whose GM traded Gary to save his job, is that the man's far from his prime, yet is still scoring like a player who's been in the league for a decade. On this possession, after Ananobi slips the screen with Gabe Vincent faking the double team, but then going back to his man, Duncan Robinson intelligently presses up on Trent Jr. to stop his shot and also does a nice job blocking Trent Jr.'s drive. But just when Robinson's wingspan seems like it's going to be too much for Gary to deal with, conversely, Gary keeps his handle while bodying Duncan out of the way for an easy donut at the hoop. That play you just saw just goes to show you how even when defenders shut down his first go-to move, or even his second go-to move, Trent Jr. still has the wherewithal and poise to get buckets on anyone at any time. We'll get to upcoming trade speculation, but one thing's for sure, Masai Ujiri won his trade deadline deal last year in the Norman Powell for Trent Jr. swap. On the other side for Miami, Bam Adebayo was his beastly all-star self at power forward, scoring 32 points on 13 for 17 shooting, along with 11 boards. In the last L against Toronto, Bam struggled, credit to the man for bouncing back. After trailing for most of the night and down by as many as 15 in the third frame, the Raptors used a big fourth quarter, including an 8-0 run from Trent at one point, to come all the way back 
and build up an eight point lead at 108-100 with less than two minutes to go. But the shots went cold for Toronto and Miami went on a 6-0 run to trail by two with just 6.7 seconds to go. Thankfully for Raptor fans, Tricky Nicky Nick Nurse is one of the best coaches in the league at drawing up out of bounds plays and out of timeout plays and he drew up a beautiful alley-oop from Scotty Barnes to OG Ananobi at the rim. The ball dropped through, and Toronto was up four with 6.1 to go. After a Max Struess three rimmed out, the Raptors had taken down the top-seeded Heat, with both Butler and Adebayo in the lineup and healthy for the second time in a week. Miami missed some open looks, but Toronto keeping the NBA's number one ranked team in three-point percentage entering the night to just 2 for 16 from distance in the second half is no small feat. You also can't forget, the Atlanta Hawks had won 7 straight before getting seamlessly taken down by the scary Raps, and the fact that Toronto's getting more clutch minutes under their belts with their best players all healthy, knock on wood it stays that way, but that's a great sign for the continuity potentially entering a playoff run. But the tough schedule continues as on Thursday night, Toronto welcomes the current number one seeded Chicago Bulls, then on a back-to-back, -back, they take on the scrappy, tough-to-beat Atlanta Hawks again. Both games Toronto's played against Chicago have come down to the wire, but in their second matchup about a week ago, the Bulls didn't have Caruso or Lonzo, but the Raps didn't have Fred Van Vliet and came close to making a comeback without the man who initiates everything offensively for them. Now for probably what you've been waiting for, the trade deadline deals that Masai should consider making. Given you have a young team with Van Vliet, Ananobi, and Siakam all in the prime of their careers, pursuing a trade to help those guys and cement yourself in the postseason wouldn't be a bad call, especially considering the team's glaring weaknesses can be easily improved by picking up one or two guys. It would take giving up a few young players, but it may be worth it. One trade that could put Toronto among the first tier teams in the Eastern Conference would be bringing in two lockdown defenders at their position in Miles Turner and Torrey Craig in exchange for Goran Dragic, Precious Achua, Malachi Flynn, and a Toronto 2022 first round pick. A few other trades suggested by writer Daniel Hackett of RaptorsHQ.com include Jakob Pertl and Doug McDermott in exchange for Dragic, Achua, Flynn, and a first. Lastly, Mo Bamba and Terrence Ross for Dragic, Flynn, and a 2022 first rounder. I post daily on teams around the NBA, so if you want to see more breakdowns on the Toronto Raptors, leave a thumbs up to help support my content. Who should the Raptors trade for and why? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal, who says I'd have to say the most shocking part about the Cavs is the spot they're sitting at in the Eastern Conference right now. Despite having many injuries to key players in Rubio and Sexton, the Cavs continue their success. Thank you so much for every answer. I hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.